Hey guys, just last week, Joe Biden uh, made mention that his nominee for ATF director was going to be Mr. David Chipman. Everybody knows David's background, extremely anti-gun. I'm going to go into that in pretty good detail here in a second. But I first want to say as kind of an asterisk that this could very easily be a sacrificial nomination by Joe Biden. Politics is a really dirty, tricky game. And in many cases, especially at that level, politicians are known to put forth that that nominee that they know can't pass. And Senate, the Senate is, I don't even know that it's ever happened, but the Senate, I don't know of a time that they have ever struck down two nominees in a row for the same position. So I have a feeling that it's possible, as bad of a choice as David Chipman is to lead the ATF, that they know what kind of backlash they're going to get by putting Chipman up there and the more dangerous, sinister one that they might actually have in mind to put in may be who's coming next. I would have a real hard time believing that David Chipman, with his background, could actually be confirmed through the Senate. I just have a hard time believing. I have a hard time believing all Democrats who might live in a potentially red state would actually go go for the guy. So my point is, I think this may be a sacrificial nomination by the administration so that they can bring up that second person that they think will easily pass because, again, the Senate is not known for declining two people in a row for the same position. So let's keep an eye on this and watch who that second person is because that's probably who they really want, not necessarily Chipman. Speaking of Chipman, a couple of the biggest things that you probably need to know about him is the guy has been at the actual site of two of the biggest government-funded and government-approved and government-carried-out mass murders in American history. Ruby Ridge and Waco. That's right, you probably heard of Waco, him being there, posing with the dead bodies smoldering in the background, 20 dead kids smoldering in a pile of ashes behind him. But did you know the guy was actually at Ruby Ridge too? You might be thinking, okay, so the guy was at two different, really unusual circumstances, uh, very uh, muscly type circumstances, if you will, from the government, uh, basically forcing its will onto the uh, free, free American people, essentially. You may be thinking maybe that's not that big of a deal. You know who's never been at two of the biggest, most confrontational, biggest, craziest, wackiest mass killings in U.S. history? This guy, me. I've never been anywhere like that. I've never been anywhere close to it. So the odds that it's just a coincidence that David Chipman was at both of these is a little bit weird, if you ask me. Now, speaking of Waco, obviously the man has no problem posing in front of a smoldering pile of dead bodies. Okay, that's on him. You know, you can judge if you want. I've certainly judged the guy, <laughs> rightfully so, I believe. But David Chipman also lied. He did this deal on Reddit where it was Ask Me Anything. The celebrity from the Gabby Giffords organization for banning guns and trying to repeal the Second Amendment, whatever their really nice name is, he was their celebrity. And he came on supposedly to answer anything about guns. I don't think he realized that he was going to be met with a lot of pro-gun people asking legitimate questions. One of the things that he commented on when somebody asked about a 50, he was actually making up lies saying how easy it is somehow for an 18-year-old to buy a 50 cal Barrett, which I don't know any 18-year-olds that own a 50 cal Barrett. I don't know a whole lot of people that own 50 cal Barretts. And I certainly don't know of anybody who's buying a 50 cal Barrett out of the trunk of a car, especially not some 18-year-old. You're looking at a price tag of 4000 or more. But that's simply not a tool that the criminals out there are utilizing to perform whatever crimes they're going to perform with firearms. Just not a known tool that they're going after. They just don't do it. It's, it's not a thing. However, Mr. Chipman felt the need to make up the lie that two helicopters were not only shot at by cult members that he claims while he was at ATF, excuse me, uh, Waco, representing the ATF, his claim is that he witnessed two choppers being shot down. Not only is that a lie, two choppers were not shot down. Yes, the choppers were all shot at. There were three choppers that were shot at. None of them down, nobody was hit, nobody was hurt. So no two choppers were down, no one chopper was downed. 
But even in all the smoldering chaos afterwards, again, as you see Mr. Chipman here, dancing around in front of, not missing an opportunity for a photo op, there were actually no 50 caliber Barrett's that were recovered in these smoldering flames. They are not the most concealable uh, firearms in the first place. So the man is a known liar. He is a known liar to try to make his point. He was originally trying to simply make a point that 50 cal Barrett's are an issue. So he brings up this issue in his past that tries to legitimize the situation and add some credibility to it because, oh, I was there by the way, but makes up a lie along the way and ruins his entire argument because now it makes it look like everything he says from this point forward is simply going to be a lie because he felt the need to do that. AR-15s, that is something that Mr. Chipman also wants to do away with. In October 2018, Chipman argued in favor of subjecting all AR-15s and potentially all semi-automatic rifles to regulation under the National Firearms Act but he was making that claim to say that AR-15s needed to go. He continues to call them weapons of war. Chipman made the claim to me, if you want to have a weapon of war, the same gun that was issued to me as a member of the ATF SWAT team, it makes sense that you would have to pass a background check, the gun would have to be in your name, and there would be a picture and fingerprints on file. What he's talking about is gun registration here. Now, what's odd to me is he's saying that this was the same gun that was issued to him the man is lying again. They are not using semi-automatic firearms like you and I have. They have select fire and full auto. The man is also very anti-suppressor. In 2017, Chipman claimed, anyone who has worked in law enforcement for as long as I have will tell you that silencers were not designed to protect hearing. They were designed to make it difficult for people to identify the sound of gunfire and locate active shooters. By trying to legitimize his argument by saying, anybody who's been in law enforcement as long as I have, really makes him look stupid like he was never paying attention in law enforcement because anybody in law enforcement that has any real knowledge of suppressors would actually know that they were invented for the very purpose of protecting hearing, mainly so they wouldn't aggravate Hiram Percy, Maxim's neighbors and friends as he was shooting. That's the man who developed them. He actually states why he developed them and it was not to hide the signature of the firearm so you would not know that it was a gun being fired. Another lie, and again, guys, I'm not being nominated for ATF director, and I know all of these things without doing any research, but he makes the claim that the market is flooded with imported AR-15s, foreign-made AR-15s. Do you know many AR-15 manufacturers who are outside of the United States? I know one. This one right here. This is a AR-15 made by FN, a Belgian-owned company. That's the only company I'm aware of who makes an AR-15. There are hundreds of AR-15 manufacturers in the United States. The market is not being flooded by AR-15s, first of all, because they're still one of the most heavily sought after firearms in the country. And if they were not heavily sought after, then I would say maybe the market's flooded. But clearly it ain't flooded because when a market's flooded, there's not a continual demand for them like there is for the AR-15. But obviously that's not the case. The man was trying to make a case and, and throw out and float another lie out there that simply doesn't hold water. The man is an actual liar. Again, he is a, either a liar or a con artist. He knows what he is doing. He's trying to trick the American public. He's trying to, he's trying to trick politicians. Guys, look, we all know that in Washington, D.C., very few of these guys know anything about firearms. They know very, very little. So David Chipman will have his way as ATF director because he is going to seem like the smartest guy in the room when he's talking to politicians in Washington, D.C. They're going to let him do whatever he wants because he can cite all these lies that I'm talking about right here. And people in high positions who are legislating and making laws out there are going to believe this man. This is a guy right here. Remember that Joe Biden said that they were, he was going to tax the ATF also and Chipman to put together rules that they could propose to other states to implement red flag gun laws. Chipman loves red flag gun laws. He goes on to say crime prevention should be a pretty universally accepted goal. For instance, if I see someone approaching an abandoned warehouse with Molotov cocktails, the public would expect me to arrest the would-be arsonists before torching the buildings. I don't believe that we have to allow people to shoot other people before we act. 
One way we do this is preventing felons from buying guns, absent background checks. Another is temporarily removing guns from an individual who exhibits signs of immediate danger. He, this guy actually thinks that is a good idea to disarm somebody before they've even committed a crime. You cannot infringe upon somebody's rights in any kind of way, constitutional rights, if they've not done anything wrong. Chipman actually states in one of his comments to one of the Reddit users, he's talking about law enforcement officers here when he says, right now in many states, their hands are tied if a clear crime hasn't been committed. Why is a law enforcement officer even involved if a crime has not been committed? They are supposed to respond to crime, not predict it.